Major League debut last June, Dodgers right fielder Yasiel Puig, he's been an enigma, a dazzling talent, but one whose lack of discipline on the field and sometimes off of it have confounded the Dodgers and their fans. Now after a four-month investigation, ESPN the magazine writer Scott Eden has detailed a harrowing account of Puig's escape from his native Cuba, gaining insight into Puig's connection to the illegal human trafficking rings that continue to feed Cuban prospects to the big leagues. And Puig is currently being sued for 12 million in Florida by a man who claims that he wrongfully told the Cuban government he had attempted to set up a defection. Based on testimony by Puig and others, the plaintiff was sentenced to seven years in a Cuban jail. Jeremy Schapp recently interviewed Junior Despain, a central figure in Scott Eden's magazine story. Despain, a former Cuban boxer, helped convince Puig to defect and was with Puig throughout his journey from Cuba. In Jeremy's report, Despain offers his version of that dramatic story that brought Puig to the U.S. Fly ball. Havana, Cuba has arrived. Early in the summer of 2013, Yaziel Puig set the baseball world ablaze. A 22 year old rookie from Cuba, Puig gave the Los Angeles Dodgers the spark that would lift them from last place to the playoffs. No Dodgers rookie had caused such a stir since Fernando Valenzuela in 1981. But just 14 months before he reached the majors, achieving instant stardom with the Dodgers, Puig was here, trekking through the swamps of western Cuba, on foot, with no food, no water, trying to locate a speedboat that he hoped would deliver him to freedom and fortune. Puig was heading for a desolate stretch of the Cuban coast on the Bay of Pigs. During the day, hidden in the forest, we would eat coconuts because we didn't have any food or anything. We had to drink rotten water because we had two days without food and without anything. This is Junior de Spain in his natural habitat, the gym. For years, he fought in Cuba's national boxing system, winning a medal at the Junior Pan Am Games. In April 2012, Junior was also looking for a way off the island. A few months earlier, he'd been hired by a man in Miami, he says, to bring out of Cuba one of the nation's most prized resources, a five-tool, can't-miss slugger named Yaziel Puig. But when he first approached Puig, whom he'd known since they were both children, the Spain says he was rebuffed. You know, my first he told me, damn, don't come around here. This place is steaming with cops. They come to my house and watch over things. And I told them, look, we, I'm a high-performance athlete. I'm an athlete just like you, and nothing's going to happen because we're friends from Team Fuegos anyways. He said he didn't want to then. Then he said, for me to leave this country, give me right now $5,000. I said, I don't have that kind of money. Well, then call the people in the U.S. and tell them to give me $5,000. And that happened how many times? calling Pacheco for money, giving it to Puig. Oh, so, so. That happened many times. Si en Cuba, no, no le gastó más de... Puig in Cuba spent at least 25,000 of Pacheco's dollars. Puig had attempted to defect before, but each time the plan had gone awry. Finally, Despain says, after several months of trying, he was able to convince Puig to try to defect under his supervision. The plan was for Despain and Puig to be spirited from Cuba on a speedboat by smugglers hired by Pacheco. Puig, his girlfriend Jenny Reyes, Despain, and another man, a priest of the Afro-Caribbean Catholic religion Santeria, set out from the city of Cienfuegos to rendezvous with smugglers who had been hired by Pacheco. But after two days, mostly in the wilderness, Puig, for one, was ready to abandon the plan. Puig still said, let's turn around. I said, brother, we got all the way over here. Let's wait and see. So as we were turning around, the boat was coming in. So they asked, who is Puig? And Puig said, quiet. And I said, it's him. Then they said, hey, this is for the United States. And we said, damn. And then we got on. But before anyone was going to the U.S., first, they'd have to go to Mexico. 
That's where Puig would establish residency before signing with a major league team. If he went to the U.S. without establishing residency in a third country, he'd be entered into baseball's draft. And the value of his contract would be a fraction of what he could command as an unrestricted free agent. The money was a critical factor, not only for Puig, but for the men who'd financed his defection, Pacheco and his partners. In exchange for making his escape possible, Puig would pay them more than 20% of the value of his first contract, according to Despain. Despain would also get a fee, $150,000, plus a house in Hialeah, near Miami. We were just talking. And Puig would say, I'm going to buy a huge house with a bunch of rooms, and everybody comes to my house, and then I'm going to give money to everybody so that you can all start your lives. The voyage southwest to Mexico took 36 hours, to Spain says. At one point, the cigarette boat ran out of gas. It had to be refueled by another vessel under the control of the smugglers Pacheco was working with. Finally, the defectors reached an island just off the tip of Cancun, Isla Mujeres. That's when I felt free. We got down for the boat and got on a taxi. And that's when they took us to a hotel we would be at, and there I felt home. And I felt like I'm okay now. We congratulated each other. We hugged each other. Damn, brother, we're free. We're going to the United States. But it wouldn't be that simple. Puig, Jenny Reyes, De Spain, and the fourth man were now essentially hostages. They wouldn't be freed until Pacheco paid the smugglers, led by a man known as Tomasito. According to Tomasito, Pacheco never said he didn't have the money. Pacheco would say, yes, I'm going to pay you. I'm going to send you money right now. He kept them waiting. Then Tomasito started to call. But no, they had him there waiting until the money would appear, and the money never appeared. With Pacheco unwilling or unable to pay, another man entered the picture a man who'd already smuggled many baseball players out of Cuba. Despain says Tomasito and this other man struck a deal, cutting Pacheco out of the picture. But when Tomasito raised his asking price, his new partner decided enough was enough. Now working with Pacheco, the other man arranged to steal or liberate Puig and his three companions. We left Isla Mujeres because Pacheco talked to Puig on the computer. I don't know what it's called, and they tell him, they're going to pick you up tonight at 2 a.m. I don't know, just be there. He tells me, look outside. It seems like they had already been talking. Look outside the pool. There's going to be a man with a hat walking around the pool dressed in black. We looked outside and we saw the man walking. He said, that is the man that's going to take us out at 2 in the morning. Around there, all of you. That is exactly how it went. They took us out and put us on a boat. And then we jumped to Cancun. Now in the hands of the people who'd freed them on Isla Mujeres, Puig and the rest of the group were flown from Cancun to Mexico City. Major League scouts went to see Puig display his talents. You've just arrived in Cancun. It's not at sea level. Yes, I just got here two hours ago from Cancun. I had to come here because the gentlemen were waiting for the tryout. After a few weeks, De Spain Reyes and the Santeria priest were taken to the U.S. border. Puig stayed behind in Mexico City. He just came from Cancun, right? Correct. He just got here from Cancun not too long ago. How's the situation with the documentation? Because everything should be done by July 2nd, right? Yes, without a doubt. The plan is to finalize it before July 2nd. All the documentation is now all in order. It has been submitted to Major League Baseball, and we are expecting a quick response. The Commissioner's Office and the Players Association indicate that there should be no problem that this can't be done before July 2nd. Finally, Puig was escorted to the border separating Reynosa, Mexico from Hidalgo, Texas. He crossed the bridge over the Rio Grande, declared his desire to seek asylum, and was admitted to the U.S. Soon he would sign a contract with the Dodgers worth $42 million guaranteed. But there were debts to pay. According to Despain, Puig surrendered more than 20% of the value of his contract, about $8 million, to the men who'd arranged his defection. 
But when Despain tried to collect the money he says he was owed by Raul Pacheco, he was shortchanged. A person close to Pacheco told ESPN the magazine that Pacheco never promised Despain any money. First, they gave me $27,000. I said, hey, Pacheco, this isn't what we talked about. He said, damn it, I don't have the money. They gave me only $27,000 and they told me, hey, now you have to look out for yourself and get out. And I said, but well, what about my money? And he said, no, I'll pay you later. Later, when Puig showed up, he made out a check to me for $70,000 and said to me, hey, Junior, this is the last of what I can give you. I can't give you any more money because I had to pay off a bunch of people for a bunch of stuff. Despain says that for a time, he persisted with Pacheco, demanding his money. And he said, no, I'm not going to pay you. He said, it's just like this. And find yourself a big gun if you want. Maybe you could come get your money. I said, no, no, no need for a big gun. I'm just going to call the police and that's it. And that's when the threat started, telling me that they were going to kill me. And that's it. To protect himself, Despain says he swore out an affidavit detailing his story and supporting a lawsuit against Yaziel Puig. The suit seeks $12 million in damages on behalf of a man named Miguel Corbacho. Despain isn't a plaintiff. Corbacho is suing Puig pursuant to the Torture Victim Protection Act, which allows anyone who's been tortured anywhere outside the U.S. to seek damages against their tormentors through American courts. Corbacho alleges that Puig told the Cuban authorities that Corbacho had tried to convince him to defect. Corbacho says he did no such thing, that Puig made up the story to get back into the good graces of the Cuban National Baseball Authorities, who would kicked him off the national team. Corbacho was convicted and sentenced to seven years in prison, where he says he was tortured. So, I know it's easy for me, for us to sit here and judge someone who's living in an entirely different system, like the Cuban system now, but what you're accusing Yaziel Puig of is more than being an informer. It's of fabricating evidence and a story that resulted in someone being tortured. I'm not accusing him of anything. Um, our clients and the evidence bear that out. Uh, and it isn't just our clients. Uh, Mr. Puig, and we've gotten several phone calls, of which I can't disclose right now, of other families that have had to go through this situation with Puig. A similar lawsuit's been filed against Araldis Chapman, the Cincinnati Reds relief pitcher, on behalf of several plaintiffs. That case is expected to soon go to trial. The case against Puig hasn't gotten that far. How many people does he need to denounce? Uh, how, how often in one's life does this happen? Does this just take place? Uh, where you're in the position to send five, six, seven, eight people to jail for the same crime. Uh, th that's not normal. This doesn't happen by chance. Uh, and we're not accusing him of that. The facts bear that out. And we believe they'll bear it out in court as well. As Yaziel Puig makes his mark in the major leagues, these days the man who helped him escape Cuba struggles to eke out a living, working occasionally in construction and teaching boxing classes. I'll go find Puig, but when I get to the U.S., I'll be arriving with $200,000, and I'm going to help my family, and that's it. I'm going to take everybody out of poverty, but it wasn't like that. Now, Puig declined to comment on this report on Wednesday. Major League Baseball issued the following statement. The safety and security of everyone involved in our sport is of paramount importance to Major League Baseball. MLB and its clubs have individuals and resources in place to provide appropriate security. But as a matter of policy, cannot comment on such measures that have been taken without potentially compromising those efforts.